Dr. Chen, Professor White, Edan Prize laureates, distinguished colleagues, it's a great pleasure and really an honor for me to be here at the second Edan Prize conference in Cambridge. I'm very grateful to Jesus College for hosting the conference once again, and I want to start by congratulating Charles Chen for his remarkable vision in creating the prize that bears his name. In just over 20 years, Tencent, the company he co-founded, has go grown to be one of the 10 largest companies in the world, with large-scale operations in China and, of course, around the globe. Now, for many people, that would be achievement enough. But to Charles's credit, he's taken that merely as the starting point to make an equally large change in the crucial field of education. The two EDAN prizes awarded annually for education research and education development are a great source of pride, of recognition, and of celebration of the fundamental nature of education to our future. When we talk about the University of Cambridge and education, we tend naturally to think about the education we provide to our own students. We think of our renowned supervision system for undergraduates. Lectures, libraries, our array of masters and doctoral programs attracting students from around the world. But it is important to remember that education also means something different here at Cambridge. Perhaps a less familiar aspect of our work, but one that nevertheless has a tremendous impact and aligns not only with the values of the university, but also with those of the Eden Prize. Our Faculty of Education is, of course, educating undergraduates, students taking the education tripos, study education through the lens of literature, psychology, or international development. And they go out into the world in many fields, including developing future education policy. But the faculty is also the center of world-leading research. Take, for example, the work of the real center, measuring the effectiveness of interventions to help ensure more children globally benefit from high quality primary and secondary schooling. Or the pedal center, examining the benefits of play for young children's development and their learning. But, and this is one of those lesser known achievements that I'd like to draw attention to today. The Faculty of Education here is also working on the ground in and alongside schools themselves to gather hard evidence of what works in practice and what doesn't. The projects our researchers are involved in are many and varied, but let me just give you a brief flavor of a couple of them. The DIALS project, which is an EU-funded initiative involving collaboration between nine universities, is examining ways to encourage dialogue within the classroom to help encourage tolerance and empathy using picture books as stimulus. Another major project, MITES, Multilingualism, Empowering Individuals, Transforming Societies, is exploring the benefits of multilingualism for individuals and societies and measuring whether pupils who see themselves as multilingual do better at school. Now, I can't possibly continue without mentioning our own University of Cambridge Primary School, the only primary university training school in the United Kingdom. And we're very proud of this school. Its curriculum was developed using Faculty of Education Research and students and uh, academics from across the faculty and indeed all over the world are able to come and see the theories played out in practice. And we have officially excellent teacher training, thank you Ofsted, placing young teachers in schools around our region to train and often to work after qualifying. Hundreds, indeed over time, thousands of teachers across the whole of the East of England and beyond. In all these cases, there's one common factor. Our researchers and our teachers are stepping outside of the faculty to work on the ground in our local region, in the city of Cambridge itself, but beyond too, throughout Cambridgeshire and across East Anglia. We know from many indicators 
that communities barely a stone's throw from this very place can feel a world apart. A report published a year ago by the Center for Cities identified Cambridge as the least equal city in the United Kingdom for the second year in a row. That picture of inequality is mirrored in the region as a whole. Cambridge is an engine for powerful economic growth, but parts of the Fens and East Anglia are identified among the UK's worst for social mobility. The reasons for these divides are, of course, hugely complex, but part of the process of closing them involves, you guessed it, widening opportunities for access to higher education. And that's why the University of Cambridge has teamed up with four other universities and eight further education colleges in our region to work together to make sure that young people from all backgrounds have the same chances to go on to higher education as those in other parts of the country. This scheme has an acronym, of course. Where would we be in education without acronyms? The Network for East Anglian Collaborative Outreach, or NICO, to its friends. Over the past academic year, on-the-ground staff have worked with over 10,000 students in 94 schools and colleges in years 9 to 13, pupils aged 13 to 18, and they've helped improve their understanding of higher education, prepared them better to apply, but they've gone further. They've set out to fire up the student's passion and ambition for the idea of higher education. Now, just to reassure you, this isn't about gray-haired academics, I'm referring to no one in particular, standing up and exhorting roomfuls of reluctant pupils. The scheme has seen students take part in acti activities such as creating a MASH machine which I'm told is an interactive music video maker bringing together sound, light, video controls in a single user interface. Spending a day as young medics, another opportunity, with the chance to explore and dissect real organs, pig's organs, let me say, if you were wondering. Allow me to share with you just one comment from that medical day from Lucy Lazel a year 10 student from the Felixstowe Academy. Lucy said, quotes, honestly, it's been such a great day. My favorite part has been blowing up the lungs. I'm interested in studying criminology, and this is right up my alley. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what the connection is, but the point is she was infused with passion. Colorful as all that wonderful work is, it's vital that we also analyze and assess it to make sure it's really achieving the intended goals. Building robust evidence about effective outreach work is critical to NICO, and it's a team from our Faculty of Education that is leading on that evaluation work. We are, I'm proud to say, doing this vital job exceptionally well. The consortium has been recognized nationally for its work assessing the scheme's impact on pupils in the region. Not only that, our evaluation is also running one of three national flagship randomized control tests of a set of interventions which were initially evidenced in the US around behavioral nudging by prompting students with information at key points. To me, this work says much about the education story at Cambridge that often isn't told. First, we're sharing expertise with colleagues from other institutions to create an imaginative and ambitious program engaging students on the ground. From pig hearts to music makers, this hands-on activity to widen participation in our own region is important where all the indicators show it is so badly needed. Secondly, we're applying our research expertise to making sure that this work isn't just pretty window dressing. We're finding out what works, which incidentally, of course, is a theme <clears throat> of today's conference. We're sharing those findings nationally. And not only that, we're taking interventions trialed overseas and testing those too, which will produce evidence 
that will be available worldwide in its turn. So we're starting on our doorstep, moving out to inform the national picture and influencing research worldwide, which will then bring us back to using the most effective evidence-based measures to widen participation in our own region, I hope. And on the question of widening access, I'd like to make one more point here before I hand over to the real experts that you've come to learn from, including both of the 2018 EDAN laureates. I've spoken often about the need at Cambridge to ensure we are inclusive of the most diverse talent. We cannot be truly great as a university if, even inadvertently, we are not open to the social and cultural diversity of the world around us. For Cambridge, this is an ethical issue. We need to continue to actively encourage applications from those eligible students who may have been less advantaged as a result of their educational journey. And that includes those in regions in which we live and work. We've spoken a lot about the work we do bringing students to visit this university and sending our staff into schools to talk to potential applicants about the education we offer. But in the NICO project, which starts with 13-year-old pupils, and in the work of the Faculty of Education connecting with schools across our region, we're not simply looking for next year's applicants or considering our own search for the brightest young people. No, we're aiming to raise aspirations and change the culture for young pupils who right now may not be consciously thinking about applying to university. We're investing our efforts, you could say, in the applicants of tomorrow, whether they choose to come here to Cambridge or enter higher education elsewhere. In this investment, I think, our aspirations match those of the Edan Prize. Nothing short of creating a better world through education. That is a huge aspiration, but for us, there is simply nothing more important. Thank you. <laughs>